studying sea otters, you just can't ignore that something's gone wrong. Since the hunt ended in the early 1900s, this tiny population has been growing, but it's only at 2,700 animals, and this area can hold a lot more. So what's the deal? Some scientists are on the case. Think of it as otter CSI. At the Marine Wildlife Veterinary Care and Research Center in Santa Cruz, California, a team of wildlife pathologists from the California Department of Fish and Game is unraveling a mystery. So what it looks like, very obviously to you, is a shark bite? Yes. Okay. Oh, but she can have more going on inside, okay. so we'll take a look at that as well. Almost every sea otter found dead on the California coast is brought here for examination. They're finding more than 40% of the southern sea otters that come through this lab have died from some sort of infectious disease. This is an alarmingly high percentage for a wildlife population. To determine why, and to better understand what's happening in the ocean environment, each dead sea otter is now given a full post-mortem exam, or necropsy. What they're uncovering is disturbing. Dr. Melissa Miller is a senior wildlife veterinarian specialist with the California Department of Fish and Game and the chief investigator of this lab. The kind of work that I do is really as a um, um, solver of riddles. And so anytime those otters are found dead along the coast, they're brought into our facility here. And um, one of my jobs is to examine those animals and try to determine why they died, but also equally important is to determine how they lived. What are some of the most critical things that you really want to get for every animal? It would definitely be age, sex, um, and looking at the internal organs real quick. If I had to look at it, um, at least we had a just a good picture of the internal organs, that can tell you a lot of the animal. This is the closest I've ever been to an otter of this condition. That's not going to try to bite your face off. Yeah, <laughs> I've never even been that close to an otter yeah, that's going to try to bite my face off. They are very cute, but they, they can hurt you. Yeah. They systematically look at each otter for anything abnormal. They also take tissue and blood samples that can be analyzed to find things that can't be seen with the naked eye. It's not pretty work, but fascinating. It's very common when we do these examinations to find um, sometimes more than one thing that are affecting these otters and may have caused them to come in to our table for that last examination. And even if we have an animal that has an obvious cause of death, for example, an animal that clearly shows evidence of, of shark bite, we're still gonna do this very detailed, very systematic examination. And the reason for that is that quite often that obvious thing is actually hiding an earlier domino that caused the animal to, to die. There isn't just one smoking gun. The lab sees a lot of things killing sea otters. Researchers say that one of the primary causes of mortality is diseases and parasites, most of which come from land. One of the things that I often hear when people come up to talk to me about sea otters, they hear that all otters are dying due to a single parasite called toxoplasma. The importance of it is indisputable. It's one of the most specific and um, sensitive examples that we have of biological pollution, of pollution from land-based animals getting into sea otters, but there are many, many other examples too. For each case, the lab takes the same battery of tissue samples from the otter's skin, brain, and other vital organs. They can then examine the otters at a microscopic level. They've recently uncovered a myriad of killers, from a freshwater toxin called microcystin that causes liver failure in sea otters, to nasty parasites like the thorny-headed worm that can be picked up when an otter eats a tainted sand crab. So did, when did you stop thinking that this was kind of gross? Oh. <laughs> you know, I'm not, well, I, I think as the day progresses, you're going to see what gross is next door here. But yeah. um, these fresh animals, I mean, there's no horrible smell here or anything. What other I don't, I never that found that this uh, offensive. Perspective of biologists. I think for us, it's not gross because our job is to try to find out um, what we think caused the death. And so for us, it's not gross. We're trying to help the species. Okay. We see in that perspective. In addition to parasites, diseases, and toxins entering the marine environment, otters face other hurdles. There's a large predator out there. And recently, Dr. Miller and her team have seen an increasing number of otters killed by shark attack. Well, the stab-like wounds, yeah. 
the, the thing is, yeah. it, they'll buy it and it won't go through oh, everywhere. Yeah. So you, so you, you, you sometimes get a nice jaw shaped pattern, but most often not. So one of the right. bites was right here, but I don't see where it hit the bone. In many cases, they can tell the culprit is a white shark due to the telltale serrated scratches found on the bones. So we're seeing a disturbing number of otters that are being bit by white sharks. The, the frustrating part of that is that the sharks aren't really eating the otters. It seems like they're coming up and doing sort of a test bite. But the problem is if you get a test bite from a white shark, um, that's a hard thing to recover from. In one report, it was shown that sea otters suffering from toxoplasmosis were 3.7 times more likely to be attacked by a shark. Just goes to show, researchers have to check every single case. Just because an otter has a gaping shark bite wound doesn't tell the whole story. So some animals get really sick and then, or you know, get sick and are suffering and that makes them potentially Start swimming in circles or something, I don't know. Yeah. Each new study teaches us a little bit more, but it also adds new questions to the process. And that's actually what science is supposed to do. I think the reasons for um, putting so much time and effort into trying to understand what's killing sea otters is twofold. One, all of us like otters, and they're a, an amazing, fascinating species. And so there's no disputing that. But just as important is that role that they serve as environmental sentinels. We have to remember that sea otters live in the same place that we like to go into the ocean, and they also eat a lot of the same foods that we do. And the kinds of problems that we're finding in these guys and the frequency by which we find it is concerning. Sea otters are trying to tell us some things that are really important, and we, it's time for us to listen. So there's no easy answer. These scientists are looking for the truth in a very complex system. But I think it's time well spent for the otters, but for us too. If they're sick, what does that say about our coastal environments? At least now we're listening. Thank you.